Hello my little learners welcome back to part 3 of the explanation of chapter 3 mindful eating a path to a healthy body in part 2 we learned about the components of food like carbohydrates proteins fats vitamins and minerals and how each one helps our body stay strong and healthy now in part 3 we are going to make things even more interesting we we'll learn how to test food to find out what nutrients it contains what a balanced diet means and why it's important about millets the super foods of india and the journey of food from the farm to our plate called food miles so are you ready to explore more let's begin how to test different components of food Let us find out which nutrients are present in various food items. Some nutrients like starch, which is a type of carbohydrate, fat and protein can be detected using fairly simple tests, while others can be detected only in a well-equipped laboratory. Let us explore how we can detect the presence of starch, fat and protein in some food items. Test for starch. Let us investigate in activity 3.5. Take a small quantity of the food items such as a slice of potato, cucumber, bread, some boiled rice, boiled gram, crushed peanuts, oil, butter and crushed coconut. You can take other food items too for testing. Place a small piece of each item on a separate dish. With the help of a dropper put 2 3 drops of diluted iodine solution on each food item observe if there are any changes in the color of the food items have they turned blue black record your observation in table 3.3 a blue black color indicates the presence of starch so to check if a food item contains starch put 2 3 drops of iodine solution on it If the food turns blue black it means starch is present. Potato and rice usually show a blue black color because they are rich in starch. Test for fats. Let us investigate in activity 3.6. Take a small part of the food items that you tested for the presence of starch in activity 3.5. Place each food item on a separate piece of paper. wrap the paper around the food and press it be careful not to tear the paper if a food item contains a little water allow the paper to dry does the paper develop any oily patch what do you think is the reason for this patch if oil or butter is present in the food item it leaves an oily patch on the paper now hold the paper against light Can you see the light faintly shining through this patch? An oily patch on the paper shows that the food item contains fat. Which of these items contain fats? Record your observations in table 3.3. So, to check if a food contains fat, place it on a piece of paper and press gently. If the paper shows a greasy or oily patch that lets light pass through, it means fat is present for example butter and peanuts leave oily patches because they contain fat test for proteins activity 3.7 let us investigate take the food items tested in previous activities make a paste or powder of the food item using pestle and mortar put about half teaspoon of each food item in a separate clean test tube add 2 3 teaspoons of water to each test tube and shake them well add 2 drops of copper sulfate solution to each test tube using a dropper now take another dropper and add 10 drops of caustic soda solution to each tube shake well and leave the test tubes undisturbed for few minutes so to test for proteins in food make a paste or powder of the food item add some water in a test tube then add 2 drops of copper sulfate and 10 drops of caustic soda 
and shake the test tube and wait. If the mixture turns violet or purple, it means protein is present. For example, peas, soya bean and peanuts usually show a violet color so they contain protein. Some precautions should be taken while doing the protein test. The chemicals used like copper sulfate and caustic soda are harmful so they should be handled carefully. Do not touch, taste or smell them. If any chemical spills on your body, wash it off immediately with water and always perform the test under your teacher supervision. What did you observe? Did the content of some test tubes turn violet? This violet color indicates the presence of protein in the food item. Write your observations in table 3.3. What conclusions can you draw from table 3.3? Which food items show the presence of more than one nutrient? Which food items show the presence of both proteins and fats? Peanuts show the presence of both proteins and fats. This indicates that any food which we eat may contain multiple nutrients. Is there a food item that lacks any of these nutrients? Which of these foods do you consume daily? Try to find out other foods that are good sources of starch, fats and proteins. By performing simple food tests, we can detect the presence of starch, fats and proteins in different food items. For example, potato and boiled rice turned blue-black when iodine was added, indicating the presence of starch. However, they did not leave any oily patch or turn violet, so they contain starch but not fat or protein. Cucumber showed no change in color with iodine, no oily patch and no violet color, so it does not contain starch, fat or protein. Boiled gram did not show starch or fat but it turned violet during the protein test. This means it contains protein. Peanuts tested positive for all three nutrients. The iodine test turned blue-black, an oily patch appeared and the protein test turned violet. So peanuts contain starch, fat and protein. Bread or chapati turned blue-black with iodine indicating starch but did not show fat or protein. Butter left an oily patch on paper but did not respond to starch or protein test, so it contains fat only. Coconut showed the presence of starch and fat but not protein. Paneer did not contain starch but it did contain both fats and proteins, making it a healthy bodybuilding food. So, different food items contain different nutrients. Some like peanuts have multiple nutrients, while other may contain only one. This shows that we need a variety of foods in our diet to get all essential nutrients. Balanced diet. Are nutritional requirements the same for everyone? Do you and your grandparents need the same type or the same amount of nutrients? Requirements of the type and amount of nutrients in a diet may vary according to age, gender, physical activity, health status, lifestyle and so on. Let us find out in activity 3.8. So you have listed food consumed by you during the week in activity 3.1. Check whether your food contains all the nutrients and other essential components necessary for growth and development. If not, check which nutrients or other food components need to be added. A diet that has all essential nutrients, roughage and water in the right amount for proper growth and development of the body is known as a balanced diet. What changes would you make in your diet to make it a balanced diet? Let us compare in activity 3.9. Read the nutritional information given below for a packet of potato wafers and a packet of roasted chana shown here. So potato wafers has... 536 kilocalories energy, 35 gram fat, 53 gram carbohydrates, 7 gram proteins and 4.8 gram dietary fiber. While 
रोस्टेड चना हैज 355 किलो कैलोरी एनर्जी 6.26 ग्राम फैट्स 58.58 ग्राम कार्बोहाइड्रेट्स 18.64 ग्राम प्रोटीन्स एंड 16.8 ग्राम डाइट्री फाइबर बेस्ड ऑन द न्यूट्रिशनल इंफॉर्मेशन ऑन द फूड पैकेट्स गिवन एव विच फूड वुड यू चूज एंड वाई सो रोस्टेड चना हैज लेस फैट मोर प्रोटीन एंड more dietary fiber compared to potato wafers potato wafers have higher calories and a high fat content which makes them less healthy roasted chana provides better nutrition especially for protein and fiber which are essential for body building and digestion so roasted chana is a healthier option than potato wafers it has more protein and fiber and less fat which makes it better for a balanced diet Potato wafers are junk food, tasty but not good for health if eaten regularly. So, what is junk food? Some foods have high calories due to high sugar and fat content. Moreover, they contain very low amounts of proteins, minerals, vitamins, and dietary fibers. These foods are called junk foods. These foods include potato wafers, candy bars, and carbonated drinks. consuming these foods frequently is not good as these are not healthy for our body they make a person obese such a person may suffer from several health problems you should always remember dr poshita's statement that health is the ultimate wealth we should take care of our body to stay healthy eating a balanced diet and avoiding junk food contribute towards a healthy body good health is essential for leading a happy life which of the two foods you studied in activity 3.9 could be labeled as junk food so potato wafers can be labeled as junk food because they are high in fat and calories but low in protein fiber and other essential nutrients so eating them often can be unhealthy for the body packaged food items must have information about the nutrients on their cover the information should list the amount of each nutrient sometimes more nutrients are added to the food during processing to improve its nutritional quality iodized salt and some baby foods are examples of fortified foods the food safety and standard authority of india fssai is a government agency that regulates food quality in india so packaged food must display nutritional information on the label showing how much of each nutrient it contains sometimes extra nutrients are added to make the food healthier this process is called fortification for example iodized salt and certain baby foods are fortified In India the Food Safety and Standard Authority of India makes sure our food is safe and meets quality standards This thali shows a balanced diet with the right mix of carbohydrates proteins fats vitamins minerals and fiber for a healthy body but remember we don't need to eat everything at once eat in the right amount and at the right time to stay healthy Let's read further. Millets, nutrition rich cereals. You may have heard of jowar, bajra, ragi and sanwa. These are native crops of India. These can be easily cultivated in different climatic conditions. These highly nutritious grains are also called millets. Have you ever had food items made from these millets? Millets are small sized grains and have been an integral part of the Indian diet for centuries. They have regained popularity due to their numerous health benefits. They are good sources of vitamins, minerals like iron and calcium and dietary fiber as well. That is the reason they are called nutri cereals. They contribute significantly to a balanced diet required for the normal functioning of our body. So grains like jowar, bajra, ragi and sanwa are called millets. Millets grow easily in different climates even with less water that's why they are called native crops of India. 
Millets are packed with vitamins, minerals like iron and calcium and dietary fiber. They help keep our body strong and our digestion healthy. That's why millets are also called nutri cereals. They are full of nutrition and are an important part of a balanced diet. Food miles from farm to our plate. How does food reach from a farm to our plate? What are the steps involved in this process? Who are the people involved in this process? Do you know how much time and effort is required to get the wheat flour once seed grains germinate in the farm? Let us look at figure 3.10 to understand the entire process of making the chapati that we eat. Story of chapati from farm to plate. The journey of a chapati begins with a farmer who grows wheat in the fields. Once the wheat is ready, it is threshed and winnowed to separate the grains. These grains are then stored safely to protect them from moisture and pests. Next, the stored wheat grains are ground into flours and packed properly. The flour packets are then transported to shops where people buy them. Finally, the wheat flour is used to make delicious chapatis which reach our plate. This entire process shows how much effort goes into bringing food to us. So we should always value and respect our meals. So what is food miles? The entire distance travelled by a bag of wheat or any other food item from the producer to the consumer is known as its food miles. Reducing food miles is important because it helps to cut down the cost and pollution during its transport. It helps support local farmers and it also keeps our food fresh and healthy. Many people waste food leaving it unconsumed on their plates. One must remember the time and effort put by our farmers and other community members in getting the food from the farm to our plate. We must take only as much food as we can consume. It would reduce food wastage. Try to find the timeline for the various processes involved in getting the food from farm to plate. Eat healthy, share and respect food. Support local producers. So many people leave food on their plates without eating it. This is called food wastage. We should always remember the hard work of farmers and others who help bring food from the farm to our plate. So we must take only as much food as we can eat. This helps to reduce wastage and respect the efforts behind our food. Let's eat healthy, share food and avoid wasting it and support local farmers. Now you might be curious, how does eating local food help reduce food miles? So eating local food helps reduce food miles because local food is grown near our homes. So it travels a shorter distance to reach us. This means less fuel is used for transport which helps reduce pollution and cost too. It also keeps the food fresher and supports local farmers. So in short eating local food helps reduce food miles because it is grown nearby. So it travels a shorter distance uses less fuel, causes less pollution, stays fresher and supports local farmers. Here you can see the keywords from this chapter. That's all for today, my little learners. We have now completed the explanation of chapter 3, Mindful Eating, a path to a healthy body. I hope you understood the concepts clearly. In the next video, we will go through the question and answers from this chapter. Till then, take care, eat healthy and bye-bye.